Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, Molly Pope Art. This is a strawberry painting tutorial and I will add a free downloadable how-to drawing on my Pinterest page, Molly M. Pope. It will be under the title of tutorials. You can find it there if you'd like to download it, print it out, and follow along with me and paint your own. The colors I'm using to paint this strawberry, um, first off, is I am adding a permanent red uh, wash over the entire strawberry, and that is the base coat for the strawberry. So just a permanent red. Um, this actually, the color of permanent red is a Hobby Lobby color. I use a lot of different colors um, in my paint arsenal. Um, I use Liquitex colors and then sometimes I will go to Hobby Lobby and get paint colors and their acrylic paints are just as nice as Liquitex. Um, and then I'm adding a little bit of a Prussian blue to my red um, just to deepen it a little bit and add um, a little bit of shading to the strawberry, particularly around the edges of the strawberry and where the leaves lay over the top of the strawberry. And I'm gonna let that dry down a little bit um, because it's easier to work and add shading and dimension over the top. If you let your painting dry down a little bit and do your layers and stages. Um, and then, so this tutorial has a larger strawberry that you see to the left. And then I painted a strawberry, <clears throat> a smaller strawberry to the right, which is a little bit smaller and not quite ripe strawberry. Um, I wanted to show what a strawberry that was in the middle of ripening looked like. And just to add a little bit of interest to my finished artwork. Um, so that strawberry, the bottom of it gets base coated with a mixture of yellow, um, uh, excuse me, light olive green mixed with a little bit of white. So that gets the lower portion of the strawberry. And then what I'm showing you now is how to blend um, the red with the green. Um, now, red and green are complementary colors. So if I were to just directly sort of mix them together um, full strength, what would end up happening is because they are opposite each other on the color wheel, um, they would cancel each other out and they would you would end up with sort of like a muddy um not pretty um mess on your strawberry so what i did half of it went um that light um olive green mixed with white and then the top half how i mixed the top half was i used the red mixed with white so it's sort of like a pink color sort of like a watermelon pink color um, and you want to make sure that both of those areas where those colors meet are wet. Um, not, not soaking wet, but you want there to be somewhat of a moisture um, between those two areas where they meet. And then what I'm doing now is I'm using a brush and I'm re wetting the green area since that got painted first. And then adding white to each of those mixes. Uh, of the yellow green and the red and sort of blending those two areas together by sort of scruffing them together and overworking that area a little bit so that you'll get a nice um, not a solid line uh, between the red and the green but sort of mixing them together a little bit just using um, a brush and blending lightly blending those areas together using some um, patience mainly and it takes a little bit more time to blend those two areas together but I promise you it is well worth your effort. You'll have a nice pretty strawberry that still has the whitish green bottom part um, and then you'll have the upper area where the strawberry is ripening. You'll have that effect of it looking a lot more realistic and sort of a soft blending together of those two areas. Now I'm working on the larger strawberry leaf 
that is under the larger strawberry. And I wanted to paint these leaves with a little bit different mix. So I used um, the Hooker's Green and I mixed that with Burnt Umber, um, which is a mix that I use a lot in my painting of my leaves and vines. Um, it's a really beautiful mix that looks a lot more realistic than, say, the green straight out of the tube. And I added a little bit of Prussian Blue to that mix because I really wanted the um, leaf to have a little bit more of a sort of deeper olivey green um, mix with tinging it on a little bit of the cool side so that's why I added um, the Prussian Blue and I used that stronger mix um, under where the strawberry sits on top of the leaf um, or appears to so use that mix for your shading as well and the leaf to the right that's under the red and, and um, green strawberry um, I made that a little bit different and that mix is used with a little bit more of a light olive green mixed with a little bit of the brown not too much because it's also next to that strawberry that is maturing the red and the green so I wanted that leaf to also appear to be a little bit younger and so I wanted it to be a little bit brighter now again just like we did with the strawberries um, we're working in layers so now I'm going back over that first leaf that I painted and adding a second layer of paint color and you can see it's a lot stronger mix of um, the burnt umber mixed into that grain. And I also used yellow oxide, um, which is a yellow ochre color. Um, and here I'm adding that shading with the Prussian blue over the top too. So I'm working back and forth between all of those colors, the, adding the blue into the green and then adding a little bit of the yellow into the green to get a lot of variances in that leaf color. I really like how it turned out. Um, so hopefully you'll, <clears throat> you'll like it too and you'll give it a try. And now I'm working back on that second leaf that was painted um, and adding a little bit more of the, um, the light olive green um, on the edges of the leaves. And you can see I'm actually adding the section sections of the leaves um, and the veins of the leaves without actually painting the veins just yet. So I'm just pretending that those veins are already on the leaves, um, just kind of knowing beforehand where those leaf um, veins are going to go. And so I'm painting those sections in between where the veins are going to go. If you need to paint your veins first so that you can sort of have a road map and see where you need to add those leaf sections, by, then by all means, paint your veins first. This is just a different way of painting leaves um, that I found that I really like to paint. So it's totally up to you how you do it as long as your end effect is a leaf that has um, veins and little serrated sections. Um, however you get there is fine. And again, you can see how I'm painting in layers. 
um, acrylic painting, even though it gives nice coverage versus, say, watercolor, um, you have to paint your paintings in layers. Um, so, and that's just sort of building up layers um, over and over again, as many layers as you need, and letting each layer sort of dry down a little bit so you don't get a goopy mess on your paintings. Um, now I'm adding some highlights to the strawberry. We're gonna go back and we're gonna add um, some dimension to that strawberry before we add in the seeds. And um, that mix is just basically using the red paint that was based, um, used to base the strawberry in and adding some white to it and hitting that area of the strawberry where light would be reflected off of it. So that is the upper side of the strawberry, um, a little bit towards the middle. And you wanna stay away from the edges when you're painting um, dimension and you're painting realistically. So now I'm going back in and adding a little bit uh, stronger, um, um, a little bit more layering of the original red. So you can kind of see where my highlights are already. They're beginning to show on the strawberry. So you want the edges to be dark um, to show that it is sort of a rounded object and moving away from the light in the part of the strawberry that is rounded and would be hitting the light strongest, which is the upper um, left-hand side. If our light were coming from the upper left-hand side, you would have the stronger highlights in that area. Um, and now I'm base coating the leaves that are on the, stock, the top of the strawberry, the little cap that's on the strawberry. And I'm using that same mix um, that, was, that I painted the lower leaf in. So a little bit of hooker's green mixed with burnt umber and the smallest amount of the Prussian blue. And then um, same, same way we painted the strawberry, we're gonna build this uh, area up in layers. So one layer to coat everything and get nice creamy consistency covering of that white paper uh, with those colors. And you can see that leaf, um, I made it a little bit brighter by just adding a little bit of the light olive green to it. Um, again, um, when you're painting realistically, you wanna have a variance in your colors. Not everything should be exactly the same as what's next to it. So make sure you're varying your paint a little bit um, by adding a little bit of this or that, depending on what it needs um, to get it to look like your reference photo. Um, I use the Prussian blue down in the center of that leaf cluster um, just to make sure that it looked like there was some dimension and some depth in that area because those leaves are growing out of the top of the strawberry. And you wanna give that impression by adding a little bit more depth of color um, in the middle of that leaf cluster. Now I'm painting the leaves that are on the lower, um, smaller strawberry. And those leaves that are in the backside that are kind of sort of tucked behind the larger strawberry, um, I made them a little bit deeper and I made them a little bit deeper by just adding a little bit more Prussian blue to that area so they would appear to be in shadow. And the leaves that are towards the front of the strawberry, um, the top front of the strawberry, just got, um, I added more light olive green to that mix so they appeared a little bit brighter and that will automatically make them appear to be more up front. Now I'm beginning to add the little seeds that are on a strawberry. And what I'm using right now is a fine tip nib pen. Um, and it's just a basically uh, a pen that you could use for outlining a subject or if you were drawing in pen and ink, you would use one of these fine 
uh, nib pins. This is a, um, a 0 0.05, um, just a graphic artist pen. Um, and when you're adding your strawberry seeds to your strawberries, they would not be in straight um, horizontal lines on your strawberry. The way you would add your seeds, it's very important that the seeds follow the shape of the strawberry. And since these strawberries are both sort of, um, you know, I painted them to look like they were still attached to the strawberry plant. And you'll see when I add the stems, um, paint the stems in here in a little bit. But your seeds need to follow the shape of the strawberries. So um, they are spaced out. They kind of um, are drawn in semi-circular patterns kind of around the strawberry. Here I think you can see a little bit more with me painting the base color of the seeds. And that base color for those seeds is just a really watery wash of um, burnt umber. And I'm using a smaller brush to now paint the seeds. Um, and that will I'm just basically using my road map that I already started by using the artist pen. And again, just a watery wash of the burnt umber. The next color that goes over those seeds, um, and I'm just repeating the same process for the large strawberry and the smaller strawberry. Keep in mind that when you are adding these uh, seed beds to the smaller strawberry, they should also be smaller in size because they're growing on a strawberry that's still um, growing, basically. So just keep in mind that the scale difference on the seeds of the large strawberry should be exactly that, larger. And on the small strawberry, they should be a little bit smaller. The next color that gets applied over your seeds is a little bit of a mix of um, yellow oxide or yellow ochre, if that's what you have, which is kind of a goldish color of yellow. It's not a bright yellow. You want to have a little bit more depth to your yellow. So that yellow oxide is a perfect shade for that. And those little yellow seeds get added to the left-hand side of your um, burnt umber that you apply and you're not 100% covering up that burnt umber you can still see that burnt umber which is the, sh the um, brown seed portion um, you'll still see that you want to still see that on the right hand side so you're not 100% covering up that brown um, that burnt umber that you initially applied so the um, yellow ochre will be kind of next to that brown and a little bit covering it, but not fully. And you'll repeat, repeat that process on the smaller strawberry. The next color that you apply on your seeds is a white mixed with your yellow oxide. So it should be sort of a creamy color. So it's not a bright white. It's a little bit more of a creamy um, butter shade of white and that is your highlight color and that gets applied in an even smaller amount on the upper left hand side of each little seed. Um, who knew there were so many steps to painting seeds on a strawberry but this is how you paint realistically. Um, there are lots of layers and lots of steps. Now I'm beginning to paint the stems on this strawberry, little strawberry cluster, and the colors that I used for the stems is a very watery mix of hooker's green with that burnt umber mixed in. Um, the reason that you add a little bit more water to this mix than paint is so that it flows off of your brush easily, and so it's kind of like an ink consistency. Now this little design has two little flower buds um, on it and those little flower buds have little um, 
small, thin little leaves that are in between each of the petals. And those little um, green slivers that you see me painting now, those actually, as the strawberry grows and, it, and is formed, um, that flower head will become the, um, or that middle part of the flower actually becomes the strawberry fruit. So those little leaves that you're painting, you saw me just paint, those actually become the larger leaves that are on the top of a strawberry. So um, we're gonna let that dry down a little bit so that when we paint the strawberry petals, it doesn't get all muddied together. And um, so I'm going back to the um, leaves and I'm beginning to add some of the veining material or the veining lines. And also um, I'm adding a little bit more of a shadow where the large and the straw, um, small strawberry lay over the top of the leaves. Um, in order to get some dimension, we wanna sort of pop out those differences a little bit more. So a little bit more shadow around those edges and then the veining um, colors are just basically almost exactly what you use to base coat your leaves with. So it's that stronger concentration of the hooker's green mixed with the burnt umber and on the smaller leaf, it has more of that light olive green added to it. So this is where you can really paint in those sections um, to those serrated strawberry leaves and put those little vein lines in those little sections. Now, what I'm adding right now is the highlight color to the veins. So first you lay in the deeper um, color in the veins and then you just go back over each of the veins with a brighter, lighter um, color of the um, leaf base coat version. So for the darker leaf, that just I just added more um, light olive green with a little bit of white mixed into it to get a nice highlight color. And now I'm going back over the leaves that are on the top of the strawberry and just defining them a little bit more with that highlight color also. Um, you can kind of see in this clip, especially I think that that bright highlight color really sort of shows up on the leaf and really helps it to pop out a little bit more. And I'm adding a little bit more of a deeper uh, shading color around the strawberry leaves and around the edges of the strawberries. Um, and that mix is 
that prominent red mixed with the Prussian blue. It makes a really pretty shading red um, and just to sort of give your strawberries a little bit more dimension. That shading color is also perfect to add towards the tip of the strawberry and around some of the seeds um, on the left hand lower side of those strawberry seeds too to give them an even more sense that they are sort of down into the, the um, body of the strawberry um, if that kind of makes sense. Um, and just about ready to um, Start painting your little strawberry blossoms, the little bodies of those strawberry blossoms. The center of the strawberries get um, the yellow oxide mixed with um, a little bit of hooker's green. Um, and that gets in the center of the strawberries. I also went back and added some highlight um, colors around the tops of those strawberries which is that sort of uh, light light pink shade it seems strange to put light pink on a strawberry but it makes a really beautiful um, highlight color and again because there's so many seeds on here that same process of the shadow gets applied around each strawberry seed and the highlight also gets applied just on opposite sides um, so it takes a little bit of time to paint realistically, um, a little bit of patience, but if you're patient and you go through all of these steps, you should get really beautiful results in your strawberry and flower painting. Um, so for the middle of that little strawberry um, flower, you'll see um, it was that light olive green mixed with hooker's green. Um, I also used yellow oxide towards the upper um, left in the middle of the strawberry blossom. Each blossom then got outlined with a mix of Prussian blue mixed with white, a very, very light blue. Um, they got outlined and then there were little tiny little stamens that were painted using a little bit of yellow mixed with the smallest amount of red to add little filaments um, to the strawberry blossoms and again I will add the um, drawing or a drawing um, along with the names of the colors and the paint colors that I used um, little paint swatches that will be I'll put a link in the description for this video um, and feel free to you know hit that link, um, print out the strawberry uh, drawing, and follow along with me. If you have any questions um, or comments, I'd love to hear them, um, and I really appreciate you spending time and watching me paint and learning how to paint. Let me know if you have any questions. I'd love to hear them. Thank you so much. I hope you have a great rest of your day.